Hey everyone, this is Exploring Fiction, and welcome back to another video. Hey, before we get to the video, check this out. 99% of my viewers are not subscribed. If you're a part of that 99%, please consider subscribing, as I would love to have you here. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So guys, before we start, just to let you know, there will be spoilers for Top Gun Maverick, so if you have not seen the film yet, what are you doing? Go see it. But, yeah, anyway, uh, just... To let you know, there will be spoilers ahead for Top Gun Maverick. The original Top Gun was a movie that was constantly on in my household growing up. However, it's been a long time since I personally have seen it. I had high hopes for this movie, and on first viewing, it delivered. I thoroughly enjoyed Top Gun Maverick. On second viewing, though, it was elevated to more than a film. It became an experience I didn't want to walk away from. Now obviously, a highlight of this movie is the action. Though it feels a bit more Hollywoodified than I remember the first one being, the action and reality of the dogfighting and flight scenes in this movie was unparalleled. And what I mean by more Hollywoodified, I mean you can tell it's a Hollywood movie. I'm, I'm not certain exactly how to put that in different terms, but, I mean, you know what I mean. It's just kind of a feel thing. Like, some some films feel more gr grounded, but this one, some, some of the action feels like, wow, you're watching a Hollywood movie. However, the flight scenes were incredible. And as someone who doesn't really, you know, have much interest in, in, in fighter jets and all that, it, it was still amazing to watch. Uh, the plot, of course, held many comparisons to the original Star Wars, but I don't think that the plot was as important in this movie as compared to a lot of other aspects, so that didn't really bother me. The whole having to go into enemy territory and blow something up sort of thing. You know, obviously some people have pointed out it's reminiscent of Star Wars, but like I said, I think this movie is about different things than that, so the, the plot doesn't really matter as much, to be honest. Uh, the callbacks in this movie, while they so somewhat felt like they existed purely for the fans, they still felt deserved, earned, and natural enough to where I, as an audience member, could appreciate the love behind the film, where I could forgive if any of the nostalgic scenes were only there as nostalgia. So what I mean by that is, like, so some, of the, some of the callbacks and stuff that they did, like the Danger Zone theme at the beginning, or, like, his, the scene with Iceman... I mean, some of them felt like they were heavy, heavily there for nostalgic reasons. However, I can appreciate the love poured into this film and the, yeah, just the love for the fans. And so, e even if they were there just to please the fans, that's fantastic. Uh, you can, you can tell this movie was made for us. And so, I enjoyed it even if it was a little obvious that some things were there just for nostalgia. However, the best part about this movie was the characters. I mean, seeing Pete Maverick Mitchell again was great, especially because it felt like seeing an old friend. Not like seeing your twice-removed older cousin who let himself go. I mean, this feels like the Maverick from Top Gun just aged. Miles Teller as Rooster was another great choice and performance, not only because he looked and acted like Goose, but because he had some independence from him, too. You know, he, he had his own personality, and he was just played fantastically by Miles Teller. To me, Glenn Powell as Hangman was the most underrated and my favorite character because of his personality and the lesson to be learned from his arc. I mean, he starts out off as this cocky, arrogant guy, and while he's still kind of cocky at the end, the lesson he learned for me was just a great one for a lot of people out in the world today, including myself. Even if you get benched or aren't where you want to be in life, you have to be ready when your name's called, and that's what we all learn, should have learned, and I did learn from Hangman's character, and I, for that reason I thought his character was the best. The rest of the team, Phoenix, Bob, Payback, and Fanboy, were all great additions. I mean, the camaraderie together with all of them was great, and I just wanted to be a part of that group. Um, the, the senior officers, Hondo, Warlock, and particularly John Hamm as Cyclone, stood out to me. They really made this world pop. They felt like great 
foil characters almost to Maverick. And Ed Harris as Kane was the perfect in-command type figure, reminiscent of the actor in the original Top Gun, who was also in Back to the Future. I forget his name, but you know who I'm talking about, the bald one. Jennifer Connelly was also fun, and a solid romantic interest as Penny, and it was cool that her char- her entire character came off this throwaway line in the original Top Gun, but it still felt like her and Tom Cruise as Maverick had a past, and we're finally getting to see... It feels like we're jumping back in to a relationship that started a long time ago. And at the conclusion of this movie... All I wanted to do was spend more time with these awesome characters, and I haven't felt that way in a while. I, I, I was talking, I was saying this before when I was talking about some of the early characters, but I just wanted to spend more time with the, with the main group of characters: Maverick, Rooster, Hangman, Bob, Phoenix, Fanboy, and Payback. I mean, that whole core group. They 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 just had great camaraderie and. You know, this ha- this happened to me a lot when I was a kid, when I was reading or watching fictional stuff, so let me know if it happened to you, but, like, especially when I was a kid, I would put down a book or finish a movie, and I would really get this feeling of, wow, I wish I was in that group, and that's what I got with this movie, and I haven't felt that as much in recent years, and so that really made me realize, wow, what Top Gun Maverick really did, and wow, I just wanted to be with these characters outside of the the movie world they were in. And that's how you can tell when, when a good story is being told. This film is fun, emotional, intense, and satisfying all in one. And, yeah, Top Gun Maverick really delivered. And that's why I can say it was more than just a film... It's an experience. So guys, let me know in the comments below if you've seen Top Gun Maverick and what you thought about it, if you did. Uh, Like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new here. I would love to have you. And as always, I will see you next time.